Okay, so the Red Wall series. This is the longest series that I have read. The only one I can think of that was um, longer was Narnia, which was seven books, but those were very, very thin books. And these ones are quite a bit thicker and a lot longer. So I'm just gonna go over, um, you know, how, how I read the series, give a general description of it, why I like it, why I think you would like it, and then some of my favorite books in the series. And so that's what I'm gonna do. So I read this series in the order that the books were released. So I started with Redwall, which is this first one here, and I ended with the last one, which is the Rogue Crew. Now you can read this in chronological order. Um, you can go online on Google and you can find like how to read it in chronological order. There are like um, things that explain that to you. But the great thing about this series is that the books are, they're all connected. They all take place in the same world and realm, but they're also all individual. So you could read it in any order you want. Like, for example, these two are kind of like, um, this is kind of like the sequel to this book, but you don't have to read it that way. You could read this one, and then you could read this one, and then you could read this one, and then you could read this, and then this, or this, or that, you know, how, however you want to read it. They're all like their own individual books, so when you pick a book up, you're going to get a beginning, middle, and end. You're not going to feel like you jump in the middle of a story, but they're also all going to be connected, and, you know, they're going to have, like, reference the same places and stuff. And that's one thing I really like about this series. Okay, so I'm going to give a very brief and general description of this series. It's kind of hard to do because it spans 22 books, but I'm going to try. So I want to show you two maps. The first one is this one, because this is Redwall Abbey. And Redwall Abbey is referenced in all of these books. It's at least hinted at in all of these books. Now, not all of the books take place in at Redwall Abbey. Sometimes it's, you know, sometimes it's at Redwall Abbey, sometimes it's characters from Redwall going to help other places, but it is at least hinted at. So, Redwall Abbey is a abbey, it has fortified walls, it has orchard, it has a um, pond where characters um, fish from, it has an infirmary, it has a bell tower, it has school, it has, you know, all these different things, um, it has lots of um, history and, you know, books and writings of history of the land and area. And distant lands and areas but you know it's a place where creatures live in peace now all the creatures and characters in this series are animals so Redwall Abbey was um, founded by Martin the warrior now Martin the warrior he his sword and a tapestry of his image are in Redwall Abbey and he will often um, in some of the other books will come to um, other characters through visions or dreams to warn them or you know like to call them to fight or take up his sword and you know fight and stuff like that so he is a very significant character he's mentioned a lot like almost in, or I think pretty much in every book in the series as well so Redwall Abbey is a place where um, different creatures live in peace and you know a variety of different animals live together in peace so the other place I want to show you or the other map I want to show you is Salamandastron, which is right here. Salamandastron is a inactive volcano, and it's where a badger lord and the hares of the Long Patrol live. And they're all trained for battle. They're all trained to fight and to protect the coast and protect the land, which includes Redwall Abbey. So Salamandastron and Redwall Abbey are very similar. They both want peace, except Redwall Abbey is more pacifist, and Salamandastron is obviously more trained for war and protecting the peace in that way. So Salman Dastron is mentioned a lot, Redwall Abbey is mentioned a lot, but the, not everything happens at these two places. But to give a very brief summary of this series, um, Redwall Abbey, because it's you know a fortified place, because it has is abundant in food, it's known for its feasts, is the target for a lot of villains. So they often want to attack it. So Sometimes Redwall is being attacked, sometimes other places are being attacked and people from Redwall are sent out. Sometimes it's something that really doesn't have anything to do with Redwall, but Redwall might be hinted at or the characters might pass through or like kind of go near Redwall. So, you know, this series is about, you know, friendships, fun, and solving riddles, having amazing feasts, and lots and lots of adventures. So I want to share a little bit about why I like this series. And one of the first things is the characters. Now, um, as I already said, the characters in this series, all the characters are animals. 
But I like how, I like the character development in each of the books. I like how, um, you know, seeing the characters change. There's 22 books, so there's quite a variety of characters. You get whimsical ones, serious ones, and all the ones in between. And I just really like, you know, all the different characters and their different personalities. And that's one of my favorite things about the series. The next kind of goes with the characters, and that is the villains and the heroes. I like the villains because they're... The kind of villains that you hate, which in my opinion is one of the best, you know, that's the sign of a well-written villain is when you hate the villain. And I like how they're not all the same. You know, they're not these copy and paste villains. Some of them are very cruel. Some of them, you know, are still cruel and villainous, but not as much. Um, some of them, you know, just, you know, maybe change their plans. Some of them, you know, have plans of conquest. Some of them have kind of different plans. Some of them you know, end up fighting more with their minions or their other fellow villains or family or whatever. Um, so it's a really interesting um, dynamic. There's, you know, even some, you know, with focuses on, like, the villain's family or on the villain's, like, friends and sort of seeing how they treat those relationships is always interesting. And another thing is I like the heroes. And, again, the heroes are not copy and paste. They are all unique. I like how some of them are just natural warriors. Some of them aren't. I like how some of them are kind of unexpected or, you know, they're kind of, you know, maybe they might fight or become a hero just for this one moment, but then, but then that's it. You know, they just fight because they have to. And along with like the heroes and the villains, I like the villains minions because not all of them are evil or like, you know, villainous like the, like the actual villain. Some of them, you know, you can tell they're just being that way because they, you know, they're scared and they, they're like, well, you know, we've followed this guy for so long, you know, I guess we gotta be committed now. And some of the heroes, like the heroes, you know, friends and stuff, um, you know, just, I like how some of them are more passive, some of them are more warrior, and I like how, you know, you could have, like, somebody from Redwall who's very passive, and then somebody from Salomon Dasher of the Long Patrol who's very, like, been trained for war their whole life. But yet they can come together and they can have, like, a really good friendship, you know. So I like that aspect of the series a lot. So another thing that I like about the series is the feasts, songs, and riddles. Now, the author of this series, um, he grew up, it was like after World War II, he was young, and food was rationed um, during that time in his in his life. So... Um, you know, he was hungry and he wanted, you know, food, obviously, and or more food. And when he would read books, he, they would, you know, talk about maybe the character would, like, go to a feast or go eat something, but it would be very brief. They didn't give a lot of detail. And because of his situation in life, you know, wanting more food, that was always kind of a disappointment for him. So when he wrote this series, he really, you know, goes into detail about the feast. Now, not too much, not like you're reading pages and pages about a feast, but he does describe the food, and I will tell you that it will make you hungry. Um, the food sounds delicious. There is actually a Redwall cookbook, which I do have. I'll show you that later, where you can make the food from this series. I haven't made anything yet, but it's delicious, and I, you know, I really want to make it. And honestly, reading about the feast, I love because I love them because they show the camaraderie, they show the friendships. That's usually where they sing songs and. You just have grand old time, and it makes me want to have feasts. They just sound really fun. The next thing is the songs. Now, in pretty much every book, there are songs. You know, like, you just pick a book, and there's going to be songs from different groups of characters. And I also like the songs, again, because it shows that friendship, that camaraderie, and, you know, it shows, like, the community kind of coming together, having this song. And also, they're just fun. In fact, if you go on YouTube or Google and you search Redwall songs, people have put some of them to music and they actually sound really good. And so I like that aspect, you know, the shows like the friendships and the bond that they all have with one another. And the next one is the riddles. So I kind of shared this a little bit. There are, in some of these books, not all of them, but there are riddles or different puzzles and stuff that the characters have to try to solve. And I always like to try to, when I was reading through this, I like to try to solve it. Um, you know, I like to try to solve the riddle before I read further before the characters did and those were always really fun was the riddles and that is another thing that I you know really like they're just they're just fun little puzzles 
Another thing I like about this series is, I've already sh shared it, the camaraderie, community, and the friendship and the family and the relationships, all of that. I love that. Um, how much that is shown in the different, you know, groups of characters in this series. I also like how unique it is, you know, all the books, they're all, they all take place in the same area, they're all connected, but they're also all individual, so if you want a book where the characters are more at sea, you could read this one. If you want a book where, you know, it's more about the long patrol, the hares, you know, who are trained at Salmon Dashon, you can read this one. If you want a book more about Redwall, you know, you can read this one. So I like how... With 22 books, each one focuses on something different. Some of them focus more on war or the effects of war. Some of them focus more on Redwall and peaceful stuff. And I just love the adventures and I just love this series. Now, you probably already have some idea of, you know, whether or not you would like this series. But just to sum up very quickly, if you like a series with a lot of characters, if you like a series that has, you know, good relationships and friendships among the characters, a series with well-written um, villains and heroes, a series with, um, you know, some puzzles, feasts, you know, community, friendship, family, and if you like a series that has a lot of adventure and, you know, battles and fighting and character growth and, you know, um, yeah, adventure, like, if, if you really just like a series with adventure, then I think that you would enjoy the series, and like I said, with 22 books, and you know, with them all focusing on different things, and with such a variety of characters, I really feel like there's something in this series that pretty much anyone could get something out of it, and find something that they like about it. I want to briefly share three of my favorite books in this series. Now, I like a lot of different books, but if I'm just going to pick three, um, then I would pick these three. First one is Redwall, the very first one. Um, kind of a given just because the first one, the first one I read, the first one that got me interest, interested in this series. So, this is definitely um, my favorite, you know, if not, you know, at least one of my favorites. The next one is The Legend of Luke. Now, this is the story of Martin the Warrior's father, like, kind of like what happened to him, and like, you know, kind of that backstory there. And it also tells a little bit about Martin the Warrior as well. And I just really like this one because I like the way it's written. I like the characters in it a lot. Um, I like um, Luke and his friends. And um, again, they're kind of more warrior type characters, but they're they're very you know kind. You know, they're not like these gruff characters. And I also like because it takes place a lot at sea, and so they're on ships and stuff. And I just really um, like that. And then the third one is the Sable Queen. Now this is the second to the last book in the series and this one I like mainly because of the characters this one has two hairs um, this is one of them that are in this series and one of them is like kind of a glutton he really loves food and the other one isn't they're both from the long patrol from Salman Dastron and I just like seeing their friendship and seeing them grow and you know get close together and become friends and so if I had to pick, I would say these three. Honestly, I, I feel like I could, you know, pick a lot more, but I'm I'm just gonna go with these three um, because I really enjoyed them. So because I mentioned this briefly, I just want to show you. This is the Redwall Cookbook, and I really love the illustrations in it. They're really beautiful. And just to show you very quickly, um, just some of the recipes. It, it kind of sections it off to like spring, summer, fall, and winter. It has some poems and stuff and then you just have recipes and a lot of them are very easy um but they sound like you know, really good like just delicious recipes and i like how they use the names of like some of them you know like formal you know like from the book and so i just wanted to show you that in case you know you're interested and it's really neat i haven't made anything from it yet but I do want to make, um, you know, some dishes from this. It has, like, drinks, desserts, meals, um, all different things like that. And I'm looking forward to actually making something from it because I think it'll be kind of fun. And it's a really neat little, neat little cookbook. <laughs> okay, so I hope that you have enough information now to decide whether or not you would want to read this series and whether you would like this series. I really like this series, and honestly, I think you all will like it as well. This actually may be, um, well, this is one of my favorite series, and I may even like it more than Lord of the Rings, which is saying a lot, because I really, really like Lord of the Rings. 
Now, I haven't met a lot of people or even talked to a lot of people who have read this series. It's not as popular as like Narnia, Lord of the Rings, and stuff like that. So if you are interested in reading this or if you have read it, please let me know in the comments down below because I would love to hear from you. And I hope that this video is helpful. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all next time. Bye!